Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing the system design of multi-factor authentication (MFA) and the scenario is as follows. Suppose there is a secure bank that wants to enhance the security of its online banking platform by adding an additional layer of authentication beyond the traditional username and password. They aim to provide their customers with a better experience by offering multiple ways to authenticate. Okay. Let's start with C4 model diagrams. This diagram includes three types that is context diagram, container diagram and component diagram. Let's discuss about context diagram. In this diagram, we illustrate how MFA system interacts with the user. This is a very basic one. When user try to log in or sign up, he or she has to go through MFA. And if login or registration is successful, they will be redirecting to the secure bank. And while login or sign up, they go through the same MFA system. Don't get confusion seeing two MFA system in this diagram. I'm just separating this. So this is the same system. Okay. Now after context diagram, we have a container diagram where we illustrate different container used in MFA system and their interactions. Let's go one by one. This user interacts with web application. Web application provides the interface for users to interact with the MFA system. API Gateway manages API requests and routes them to the appropriate services. Authentication service handles MFA logic. User management service manages user data and preferences. Notification service sends notification, example email, SMS to users. This database stores user data, authentication methods and uh, maybe logs too and there can be other external services. This figure illustrates different container within the MFA system. Next we have a components diagram where we have uh, if we talk about the system we are focusing on we have mainly three components that is authentication service, user management service and database. In authentication service, we have OTP, one-time password like SMS, POTP, time-based one-time password like Google Authenticator, biometrics, device-based and location-based. In user management service, we have user profile, MFA configuration and account lockout management like uh, if a user failed to authenticate for three times, the account should be logged and only admin will be able to unlock the account again. These all comes under user management service and uh, these two services interact with database where we do have tables like user table, table for MFA methods that is set, field attempts table and notification table. These all are the components that is required for the MFA system. So we talk about three diagram that is context diagram, container diagram and component diagram. Now. Let's discuss about system architecture. I have made some sequence diagram to illustrate the flow. First one is how user sign up or sign in process interacts with MFA. We have following actors, user, auth system, database, OTP or TOTP. First, user send sign up or sign in request. It will prompt username or password. User has to provide that. Now during sign up, a user record has to be created in the database and auth system prompt for MFA. And during sign in, if a user is verified and already present in our system, it will prompt for MFA. Now MFA can be OTP, TOTP, biometrics and so on. If OTP is set, user has to provide OTP and if the OTP is valid, the authentication will be successful. Same with TOTP service also. You can either set OTP as authentication service or you can also set TOTP. In this way, user sign up or sign in process interacts with the MFA. Next, I have made sequence diagram for user authentication and token management. So when user send sign in request and if user is authenticated, auth system will generate JWT, JSON web token and refresh token. That means it will generate SS token and refresh token. These tokens are used to validate the user on any API call and the token can be stored in cookies. 
if the token is valid then only user is allowed to perform certain action like uh, based on role user is allowed to perform action so this is rbsc role based access control and the token need to be refreshed in time the token can't be valid for long run and this add extra security to the system so this token refresh process and re-authentication process updates the token and store it in cookies next we have sequence diagram for user login process and account lockout users should not be allowed to attempt mfa three times or more than that if three attempt reach the account will be logged and uh, only admin will be allowed to unlock those account so we have another actor here that is admin we will only be allowed to do anything including unlocking the account next we have user notification system for new device logins or authentication changes this can be the main architecture for this scenario first of all the user initiate the action like a user can send a login request client can be web or mobile app api gateway will route request to appropriate backend services AWS Lambda will process the request and perform tasks like event generation. Kafka will forward request to other services. This Kafka will be useful if we want to handle multiple requests at the same time. In simple architecture, this streaming platform might not be needed. Next, queue. SNS or SQS distribute the events to the worker nodes. These nodes will process the events, interacts with the database and catches data if required. For catching, Redis or DAX DynamoDB accelerator can be used. Based on your requirement, you can choose your preferred database. If you want a NoSQL database, DynamoDB can be the best solution. Again, this is your own choice. CDN CloudFront can be used to store static content to minimize latency. For notification, SNS, simple notification service or email service can be used. And uh, to store logs, CloudWatch can be the best solution. And in extra, the process logs can be stored in S3 bucket so that it can be processed further with maybe Athena in the future. Yeah, this can be the architecture for user notification system for new device logins or authentication changes. You can modify this architecture by yourself. This is not a only architecture you can build. It is based on your requirement and on your choice. Moving on. Let's discuss how this architecture can be made highly available and scalable. We can configure auto scaling to scale the instance based on certain metrics like the number of requests coming. We can use the load balancer to distribute the traffic among multiple instances. And uh, we can also check if an instance is healthy or unhealthy. And based on that, a request can be sent to the instance. And also, we can deploy database in a replicated setup with a failover support. And uh, the cloud front can be used to minimize latency and improve availability. So this setup can be pretty helpful to improve availability and scalability. Lastly, we can look into the schema design. We have four tables with their important fields. I have already mentioned about this table. You can look this by yourself and uh, modify the fields if required. You can also build API to see how the request can be handled. So this is all about the system design of MFA. We have seen C4 model diagrams and then system architecture. We have seen three sequence diagram to understand the flow and the architecture diagram for user notification system with a way to improve its availability and scalability. I hope this video is helpful to you. I know I didn't go in details, but uh, I promise to answer your question in the comment section. So feel free to comment down below. And uh, if you like this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will meet you in the next one. Keep learning.